Hello, um, today I'm just going to tell you about my journey to healing from anxiety. Anxiety is a very, very terrible thing. Stress is an awful thing and it can be caused by trauma. It can be caused by something that happens to you when you're younger. Um, but if it doesn't get dealt with, what ends up happening is pretty scary. It could be a lifetime of OCD. It could be a lifetime of trying to find ways to cope with how you're feeling. And instead of facing those terrible little monsters of, of fear that you're feeling at the moment, believe me, having kids changed my life, but all for the better because so many years I spent just being so scared of so many things. And before I knew it, I had so many anxiety issues. No matter what I was doing, I was having these thoughts play in my head that were full of anxiety, that it caused me to just have to cope with that. I don't know, drinking was one of them. That was the one that took the longest to remove. But I really, over the years, for like six years, I really have been really conquering OCD. See, the first thing I had to do was realize that I dealt with it. And it's a hard thing to even admit if you don't even know you deal with it. So I don't know if you struggle with OCD. I just want someone else to be free too because you don't have to have anxiety. I mean, anxiety is gonna happen, but you don't have to have OCD. You can make decisions without making a fear-based decision. You see, when you have kids, it'll change like how, they're little walking mirrors of you. And I started seeing them do some silly things and I'm going, Oh my gosh, I do that. So it forced me, if I want to be a good mom, I'm going to have to change this. So I did. Um, it wasn't easy and it's an ongoing process. It's, um, it's evolving. It's, you learn new things. You learn that you're doing it again, or you just, it, I want to make people understand that they can be aware of OCD issues that they're having in their life. It's that I was, Making fear-based decisions, I, I knew after doing some inner healing and deliverance by fasting and prayer, I really started to learn where those root issues came from. And once I figured out why I was having anxiety in certain situations, I no longer was coping because I was able to forgive from my heart. Um, it's, it's really a difficult thing. It's a, it, it's, a, it's a growth spurt thing. You feel growing pains. Um, you end up discovering a lot of negativity about yourself and then you have to fight it and you have to go, wait a second, I'm going to face this. Or if you're having fear, if you're living in fear and making decisions based out of fear, thinking that you can fix the outcome by what, what kind of things you decide when you're doing something, like checking the doorknobs too much, making sure everything's locked second guessing your answers when you do something or just double checking things too much whatever it is that you do to cope i don't wish that on anybody it's a prison and i don't want people to be in prison i don't know do any of you struggle with this um it took a long time for me to admit i feel blessed and i feel like i feel like i had success in conquering a lot of fear in my life and i want to share that with somebody else i want to share that with many people anyone that will hear that you don't have to live in fear that you really can be free from ocd obsessive compulsive disorder you don't have to walk around second guessing yourself you can conquer the thing that is causing you the anxiety you don't have to run around feeling scared all the time all you have to do is take it one step at a time but the first thing is to ask yourself am i coping with anxiety it's just Suppressing it and, and saying, oh, I'm not going to face this thing I, I possibly am doing. Um, it's always good to better ourselves, always. And the best thing I ever did was admit to myself that I had anxiety and to admit that I wanted to conquer it and to just face my fears. And I've had a lot of fears and I'm just tired. I don't have to be in fear. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And that's where I struggled because I knew I was living in fear. 
And if I'm not trusting Yahweh, that's the one thing he wants me to do is trust him and believe that he, he will take care of me and my family. So I had no choice but to face this or I was living a lie. And I just want anyone else that can be freed from that to, to hear my testimony. I know many people have this testimony. I know many people have a testimony of conquering things. It's just that in, in my heart, I feel like I'm supposed to share what helped me. And it's Yahweh that helped me. God Almighty of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, He helped me through this whole process. He kept, I, I prayed one night, I just cried out to Him. I said, I'm living in fear and I don't want to live in fear anymore. And I'm not trusting you, Yahweh. What is it? Can you show me? When you first discover it, it's almost like you just want to go hit everyone over the head with it and let them know how great it is to understand that you don't have to live in fear. I have to say, it's easy to just keep living in fear and lie to yourself and just cope with the anxiety with drinking or whatever it is that you do to cope with it. But if you want a relationship with Yahweh, it's going to be important to conquer that fear. So I don't know if you're living in fear. I don't know, but I pray that you're not. I pray that you don't stay in that prison. And still that prison tries to encapture me, but it doesn't mean that with the tools now, they're in my pocket. I don't have to fall for it. I can recognize it for what it is. And so can you, if you struggle with that. Um, I know that many people struggle with it because it says in the Bible that it is impossible to not be offended. That means that something's going to come across your path. Even if you've forgiven everybody of everything, something will come your way that God will allow to, to expose something in your heart that doesn't belong that he wants out. So just know that when he's doing heart surgery on you, um, he knows what's best for you. So the question that I asked you is, do you deal with OCD? Do you deal with anxiety? Do you even know if you do? Are you in denial? I had to go through a denial stage where I'm like, no, I don't deal with that. But you know what? The only way that I could discover that I did deal with it was when I tried to stop doing the things that I thought were just bad habits. Um, smoking years ago, I don't do that for a long time. I haven't done that. Um, let me see, drinking, but that's a different story. <laughs> um, what a blessing to not be relying on alcohol to numb the pain, the pain of life, the pain of all the things that happen to us. Um, there, I know that many people out there struggle this same way that I was struggling and maybe even worse than what I was, but I feel fortunate that I understand how to conquer it. People think there's no manual for, for life. There is too a manual. The instruction manual is the Bible and the truth will set us free. But the only way we won't get the truth to set us free is if we don't actually open it up and read it. If we don't read it, we don't know what's in there. But out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And whatever you put in that heart by, by reading God's word, it will come out right when you need it. I promise it will. If you don't know where to start, just open the Bible. Just open it up and, and just start reading it. Just open it up and point before you open it up. Say, Lord, will you help me to understand this? I don't know if, if someone watching has never said a prayer before, but I want to say a prayer for you. Heavenly Father, Almighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh Almighty, your name is worthy to be praised. And I pray for whoever's watching right now, if there's anyone that is watching that hears your voice right now and this is hitting home with them, I ask a special prayer that you would free them from OCD. I pray that they would know you. I pray that you would send people in their path that could tell them the truth, Father. And I just pray that when they open up and point in the Bible to try to figure out where to start reading, that they would hear your voice and that they would obey you and hear and just listen. I'm not going to live in fear and I don't want others to live in fear. And I want others to know that they can conquer anxiety. You don't have to cope with it.